All right, guys, last week we went through 13 of the best openers to get everybody's attention at the bar. Openers are very important. They're a gift that you give to everybody around you and in exchange, they give you attention. Now we're gonna go through a fistful of the closers. These are those unbeatable puzzles, scams, magic tricks, bar bets that cause somebody to feel genuinely good about buying you a free drink at the bar. Now, here's the thing. Bar bets have a bad reputation because people learn two or three of them and they think they can run out and just because they gotcha with their trick answers or whatever that you're gonna buy them a free drink. Absolutely not. You gotta remember there are three phases. The openers get their attention. Tweeners are magic tricks. This is where you get to stretch your legs. This is why we're not gonna do a collection of tweeners because that's all of magic. Tweeners are your magic tricks, your way to spend time with someone, building up rapport and building goodwill. And when it's time to harvest, when it's time to punch out, that's when you use these closers. When done correctly, both parties feel excellent about how it all turned out. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite closers was a case where we had two totally separate bar tricks that had never, I'd never seen them go together and I combined them into one specific challenge. Looks like this. One empty wine bottle, the cork from that wine bottle, and the regular dime. The dime goes inside the wine bottle, the cork goes back into place, and my challenge to you, figure out how to get the dime out of the wine bottle before you take out the cork. Can we crack the bottle? <laughs> the bottle does need to remain in the same that. shape yeah. it's in right now. I don't know. I'm, I think I might be too logical to think of a solution. And like, I'm too you're practical. off the cuff. You're off the cuff. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be something like obvious, but yet not so obvious. Now, I could let you off the hook here, but it won't be for free. No, I honestly don't. Well, honestly, I have no clue. You're totally calling it? I'm calling it. You still want to break the bottle. I still want to break the bottle. I'm still stuck on that idea. I'm going to have to call it as well. Yeah, what did I say? The rules were you remove the dime first. Oh, right, right. And Before then you the remove the cork. So the first part is actually blindingly easy because all you have to do. Oh, no. Da, 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 da. Oh, there we go. Oh. So that's the first part. But if you'll remember, there were two parts. Now we gotta get the cork out as well. This is actually a practical problem. Of course, uh, it doesn't actually work when there's wine in the bottle. If you twist up a regular linen napkin and get enough of it inside the bottle like that, and you can see it's kind of in there, kind of loosey-goosey, get the cork in position to where when you pull it down, it'll catch on that napkin. But when you get it wedged in there and pull it down, it'll actually grab it right at that end. See how it's gotta grab it in there? And then you can take the cork <laughs> right out of the bottle. Ha -ha! Oftentimes, the best closers are dead simple. You'll notice that a lot of these come from the very early days of Scam School, which is why we're bringing them back to show to you. Because by the numbers, I'm old, and the odds are very good that very few of you were around back when we showed some of my favorite dead simple closers, like this one. We're gonna play a game. Oh, and to make it interesting, pull out a buck. All right, hold on, hold on to him here for a moment. Which do you think is more? The circumference around the top of the pint glass or the height from the top of the glass all the way down to the bar? We're gonna vote with our dollars, all right? So what do you say? You think the circumference or more is the height? I say the height. You say the height. So we're gonna start a height pile right there. Which is more? Okay, so we got one of each. We got the circumference pile. Uh, what about you? Circumference? Height. Yeah, one in the height, I'm one of each. There we go. All right, that's good, that's good. All right. The circumference. All right, so it's three to two, pretty good. Now we're gonna try to mix up the odds, and I grabbed some decks of cards. You can use packs of cigarettes here. Now the question is, the circum same circumference, right? But now we've added three decks to the height. Now you said height before, so obviously it's way the height now, right? And you're probably wondering, oh crap, I pray, yeah. Now, now what about you? You're gonna, go to, you're gonna go to height? All right, so we'll take one out of the circumference and go to height, how about you? My money's good. Your money's good. <laughs> you're holding. Let's go ahead and do it again. How about now? Talking about right here, the yeah. circumference right up here. <laughs> you guys both jump ship at this point. So it's the circumference versus the height from here all the way down to the bar. All right, well, you know what? We're gonna make it even more interesting. I'm gonna add another hack. So we're talking about this all the way down and I am gonna be the lone idiot. So you ready for this? I'm gonna be as fair as I can with this. There we go, right? Uh -huh. Fair? Still, <laughs> you check it, you check it out too early. Can you believe that? A pint glass is almost a foot around on the top. And this is not a drinking contest, but this is a challenge we're going to do. We each have a beer, we each have a pint glass, all right? 
The challenge is we're gonna have a race to get all of the beer from the bottle into the pint glass. But the rules are you cannot move the bottle. You can move the pint glass if you need to. And you must use a straw. Uh, what if I actually drink the beer? New rule, 99% of the beer has to get inside. Like almost all the beer, and whoever does it first is the big fat winner. All right, give us a ready, set, go, Jackie. Ready, set, go. How's it going there, Rockstar? Oh, uh, not great. Slow and steady wins the race. Look, come on, man, you're almost done. You're almost, almost a third done. of the way. I'm telling you, you're I so fast. I drank most I... of it. All right, here we go. You guys can do it that way. Here's the way I'm gonna do it. Oh, no way. <laughs> and there it close. is, all at once. All I did was reach over and get a tight seal and blow straight down. The pressure pushes all the beer down, up through the straw and out, and it looks like it's a little tap spigot, you know, just like, just like inside a CO2 keg or something, right? An important thing we figured out though is every bottle is a different size, and most bendy straws that you can find, like I got these at the 99 cent store, they were too short. They end right about here. You'll notice it would only go down to about the one third mark and then you'd have to twist the bottle or something like that. Yeah. I like the extra step of making sure that they're not allowed to move the bottle at all because it gives them the red herring of thinking there's something they could do with the glass. And of course it gets them doing the stuff like this business, like you guys were doing or drinking it the way you were. All right, we're gonna play a game. It's called You Do As I Do, or I like to think of it as the mirror. Copy everything I do like a mirror with up to a two second lag. Like I'm not gonna do anything like that and expect you to do that at exactly the same time. I'm not gonna do anything double jointed. I'm not gonna hire any third parties. It's all simple stuff. And if you can follow me for 30 seconds straight, I'll buy you a drink. If you make an obvious and big gaffe, you can buy me a drink. So if I do something that's not, like I just like lick my like tongue or something. I'm not gonna nickel lip. and dime yeah, yet. Yeah. The main point is you just have to be able to replicate everything I do, right? All right. All right, here's what we're gonna, well first of all, let's actually get a set up like a mirror image here. Put your arms right here. All right, all right, the game begins now. All right. Normally you would have already lost it this way because we're playing mirror image, not inverted video <laughs> image. The game begins right. now. <laughs> In this case, we had bits of business, and I like setting everything up so it looks like a mirror. But take a drink once, at least once, and then do something that involves speaking. That way, it's clear that you've swallowed the drink. Now, you notice what happened is the second time I took a drink, I started to cross my arms again to do that crazy Hail Minoku thing. So you probably were suspecting, okay, he's about to talk. So me having a mouthful of beer is the last thing that was on your mind. Remember, not all of your closers have to have an aha, gotcha, you're a big fat sucker moment. It could be a physical challenge that for all you know, maybe they'll be able to pull off. Remember to keep it classy. If somebody accidentally gets things right, just say, that's pretty good, but I'll bet you a beer, I have an even more elegant solution. And when they see it, they'll believe it and they'll be happy to buy you a beer for solutions like these. Traditionally, you do this with a plate. We're gonna use this serving Dang. tray. Take this pint of water. Yep. Yep. Number one, you only get to use one hand. <clears throat> Other hand's gotta be behind the back the entire time. Second of all, you have to drink all of the water from the pint glass, spilling no more than 10% of it being spilled out. First thing people think of, especially because we're using a tray, you know, I'll just pull it back, it'll fill up with water and I'll go <laughs> right, right, like that. That, that you'd be spilling everything, right? I'm saying you gotta drink the water from 
the pint glass. I don't know how you guys are gonna figure out how to do it, but the version, the answer I have is elegant and beautiful. Who's first? <laughs> <laughs> All my ideas require spilling lots of water. I, that's what I mean. Lots of yeah, like A scoop. Up. A scoop? Like, you know what I mean? Like just a quick. How, how fast is your scooping? <laughs> scoop that way. Oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no? That's highly impressive, actually. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm going to call that 20% ah. spillage. This is not going to be good. Oh! No! No! Yeah! That was, no, good. that was good. And I'm going to say that's close to the 10%. I'm gonna call that a base hit. That's I mean, pretty close. Man. Yeah. One hand. Forehead. What? If you can leave it there, that's the trick right there. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that was way more cool. You only have the one hand, right? So you pull it over here. I use my fingers to sort of walk it so you get the center of gravity on there. You want to make sure your hand is right in the middle, underneath the, the center of gravity. Stick it to your forehead. Forehead. Push hard. Spider walk off the side. All right, you're perfectly even. And remember, you got to put that pressure on the thumb. Keep it tilted back. Tilt back a little bit farther. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. He did it. Yeah! <laughs> this one's dead simple. It's a simple physical challenge. You can use one hand. You got to start with two beers top to top, and you have to end up with them butt to butt, okay? So whichever one of you gets it first, I'll give a billion Brian Bucks to, which you can exchange for one beer. Who wants to try first? All right, all right. Oh, and by the way, quick side note, you might think like you're clever, and I'm sure everyone at home is thinking like, just throw it up, do five triple flips, and do, 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 do. Don't do that. Flip, just flip. It's good, you, you do have one. You have one inverted from the other. I'm just getting, I'm going back in the same no, position. <laughs> I don't know where I didn't want to point that out, but you're definitely walking back to go uh, lips to lips. <laughs> I've got halfway there. All right, that's, you know what, we're gonna call it. She got halfway, how far, how far can you get? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I like the finger action. Oh, you know what? That's I a will good say, skill. This might work, but I am gonna say that, you, that I could do it without even putting a finger on the inside. Although well, this is- screw you. No, this I is can't. great though. Okay. I, you know what, keep going. You're so screwed. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> reset, reset. All right, reset, start it from the top. Okay, and again, I mentioned, I mentioned that. I said everyone at home is thinking about flipping it in the air. You don't have I to. Don't want to. That's fine. Go ahead. Like... Flip it in the air. Flip it in but the I'm air. But I'm not. Like... No, flip, flip it in the air. Okay, I can do it. All right, ready? Oh, no, 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 it's two hands. Two I hands. Know, I know. Yeah, and then you That's just good. balancing act. So like, now, now flip you got. It up, balance you got it on there. Balance it. I'm just balancing on myself. I'm trying to get this pinky swoop going, but there's no. It's useless, it can't go over the bottle. I'm trying to make it move, but it doesn't. You're trying to do the pinky swoop, right? I feel like I had to just join that. <laughs> All right, dude, I'm calling it. I'm gonna let you off this, the hook. The lovely thing about this is that it truly is simple maneuvering. There's no tricky answers or anything. And you guys were 100% right. You get like this, Yep. right? Yep. And then you do this. You're gonna go 90 degrees. Yep. You're gonna pivot upwards. Like this. Oh shoot, this is one of those things. All right, continue. It, it is one of those things. You're gonna extend one of them out at your fingertips. This other one, you'll notice, yes, you do have to use the pinky, and the pinky is weak, and then you're going to let this slide down Just your, so easy. your arm. Uh -huh. So graceful. Like that. Oh, yeah, oh, like that. Oh. And then you end up. Oh. But to burn. Yes, yes, you applaud for that. After you've gotten their attention, after you've provided value, even if you're friends, sometimes it can be a little bit weird to suddenly start betting or gambling with each other. But there's one place that it's always appropriate to gamble, and that is at the pool table. I don't want to blow your mind too hard, but there's a trick shot I've been working on. I did actually bring a very special prop, a bolt. <laughs> Nice. All right, I can tell you guys think this was a luck shot. I could do it twice in a row. Yeah! Two for two! <laughs> What's the object of this? Every time I hit it, the freaking bolt got knocked over. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> That's a good trick. Dude, it's harder than it looks. I tell you what, I'll challenge you guys. Maybe you just got unlucky. Maybe you had a rough day. I'll go ahead and I'll set it up again. We'll see if you guys can get it. 
snap. You know what? Hell, if you can do it one out of three times, we're going to be here. Isaac, you had an idea of how to actually beat this thing. Now, I tell you what, you're on the right track, and, the, and you're right. You can actually, if you land it, you'll yeah. knock it over. But the only way you get around that is, is just simply say you can't do a jump shot, right? When I set it up, I set down first the bolt. I used a bolt because that's what happened to be laying around. If you're at a golf course, you can grab a golf tee. What you want is something that has a wide base and a thin center shaft that goes up. Then when you set it up, you actually want it touching either one or both of the balls up top. When that happens, in this case, you can tell it's touching the nine, but it doesn't want to touch the 12. I'm pushing the 12 in, but then when I let go, it knocks out. That's okay. I know to aim for the nine, and when I hit it, I'm gonna hit it on the outside, knocking the nine in. Just like that. When I set it up for them, I do something slightly different. It looks like almost the same thing, and then this time, you notice what's what's touching the bolt? Well, in this case, the nine, but the, the nine, nine is the back bolt this time. Right? So they have, two, they have a choice. They're either going to hit the 13 or they're going to hit the 12. In either case, there's enough of a gap that it's not going to knock a fork. And just like that, whenever you're doing a pool trick like this, there's always a lot of random variables. You make it a two out of three proposition. That means on balance, you'll be able to do it most of the time, and they won't be able to do it most of the time. You can do it just as a display of skill using a cigarette. You'll notice the problem with doing a cigarette is if you look, cigarettes are just wide enough that it's almost always touching on all three sides. Then it's important to actually aim right in the middle. When you knock it in the middle, these guys go flying right off to the side, and this guy knocks backward. If you pick it right in the middle, it should leave that cigarette standing. There we go! Nice. Let me show you guys a pool hall stunt. So let's uh, use George Washington. So here's the game. If you want to knock out that ball and have the dime land touching anywhere in George Washington's little circle there. If it's touching, you win. If it's not touching, you lose. There you go. So that's a winner right there on the nosy. And I tell you what, I'm going to prove the skill by doing it twice in a row. There it is, two for two. You guys could divvy them up or just elect one representative. If you could get it two times out of three, you could win 20 and come out ahead, or you just go from 10 to 20 that you owe me. Down? Yeah, I'm down. All right. I'm going to make sure we use the same equipment. Who's going to go first? I'll go first. Show me what you got. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to say you got pretty lucky there. Oh. You gonna go again? Sure. Oh. Usually, there'll be a very t small, about the size of a 50 cent piece or a quarter, a little circle right here in the middle of the table. This one didn't happen to have it, so I had to improvise. So I just grabbed a one dollar bill, and of course, this is slightly bigger a target, which makes it more of a risky proposition. And plus, the bill isn't secured, and in that case, that's how you got a little bit lucky. Yeah. You knocked it, and the bill actually slid out to catch <laughs> the dime when it went down. What'll happen is that the ball shoots forward, but the dime remains in place and falls right down onto George's face. Now that's how it should work, and most of the time it does, but the trick is literally only two millimeters difference will mean the difference between success and failure. When you set it up straight like this, the ball is right underneath the center of the dime, the dime is directly over the spot. When that ball flies out, it lands right on George's head. But if you set it up slightly different, just push it back, a couple of millimeters, what happens is when that initial force knocks the ball forward, there's just enough forward momentum to launch the dime a couple of inches forward. If anyone tries to pull this on you, insist on setting up your own dime. You notice that you don't have to kill it. You don't have to knock it real hard. If you do knock it real hard, you get a little more randomness in there. Oh, you don't need to say it. I hear you out there. But Brian, my local bar doesn't have a pool table. Well, guess what? All bars have matchbooks, right? I'm not wrong about it. Matches, they're everywhere. I don't know if you noticed, but they've got these presidential matches. I pulled out three of the sweetest ones. You got JFK, you know, because he got busy with Marilyn Monroe. Theodore Roosevelt, freaking Panama Canal, and that sweet mustache. And Martin Van Buren, because of those sick, sick mutton chops. I'm going to turn around. One of you guys reach in with cat-like grace. Pick up one of the matches. Open it up. Pull out one match and put it back exactly how you saw it. So I'm going to look around the other way, okay? And you can steal the match from the front, from the back, from the middle. It doesn't matter. Interesting. I'm going to try to go entirely by weight. 
JFK felt a little bit weird. Teddy Roosevelt felt pretty solid. Mutton chops. No, he's right. You stole it from JFK. And there it is, right out the back. This works with any three matchbooks. It has nothing to do with feeling the weight of the matches. Nothing to do with the position of how they're placed. It has to do with only one thing. When you are feeling the matches, like, hold on, let me test them. All I'm doing is I'm squeezing the matchbook down tight. When it's really tight, you can put your thumb on it and you can, without any perceptible movement whatsoever, you should be able to feel. It almost locks in. It, it totally locks yeah. in. And then uh, when I'm moving it, the whole matchbook moves and I do that with all three of them. Now, when you guys open one up to take it, most people just plop it back in, right? But then once it's popped out, the moment you have it on there, you can feel it wiggling all around. I am Martin Van Buren. My mutton chops are sexy! Now you know that there's two different kinds of matches. You can get strike on box matches, right. or you can get strike anywhere matches, right? Right. The strike anywhere matches have that little white tip at the end, and pretty much anything that you drag it on, it's gonna be just fine. Right. Strike on box, the safety matches, I've been told that when you strike it, there's actually a chemical interaction between the strike on box material and the match that actually ignites it, right? Using these two beer bottles, and there's nothing special about them, and a match, you have to light one of these. I went ahead and I got a bunch of different types of match. All of these are strike on box matches, but you have to strike and ignite a match on a beer bottle. You know, that's that's not gonna happen. Right. That's not gonna work not ever, gonna work. because right. that, there's not enough friction being generated. This, maybe, Okay. It has to be on the surface of the bottle. Do you think that it has to do with pressure of the two bottles together, ro oh, oh. rolling the, the bottles or something? Okay, and okay. then like All a right. pulling. <laughs> <laughs> when Brian does stuff, it's always very, it, it's very exciting. I know. There's usually a big motion yeah. that happens. Do you think if I hold them like that and you, you, you whip the oh, match from that's good. in between? No. I like the way they clang. It's <laughs> no. pretty good. And you can't like hit it. No. I know, I know. Like what if there's something like... <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is gonna go well. <laughs> All right, so you calling it? Give me a toast, yeah. I'll give you the answer. Toast, toast, toast. toast. <laughs> a lot of the answers we give on Scam School, you are mad when you see it. Yeah. This one, it was that genuine like, I ain't even mad, I'm impressed. Because I did not believe this. Because both of these are glass, they're both equally hard, oh, which yeah. means you can use the glass from one to scratch the glass on another. To make a rough surface. But it's not just that it's a rough <laughs> surface, right? Because any rough surface would work for a Strike Anywhere match. Can you smell that? It smells like burning. Yeah, oh, man. yeah. There's something about the ground up glass that happens to be exactly right. I'm gonna push down really hard with my finger and... Oh! <laughs> I can't believe it. All right, That's here, you give it a try. You give crazy. it a try. When I was practicing with these white ones, they seem to break apart. G give it a try. What? You're better than me! That's crazy. Dan Benjamin, ladies That's and gentlemen, awesome. that was crazy. amazing. Toast this man. Yes. That was awesome. <laughs> Hello, YouTube comment hotline. Yes, no, we talked about pool tables. Every place has matches. Not every place, California. Good point. Okay, but they got chairs, right? You could make a giant spectacle using chairs. Get, 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 go away. Larry, I want you to have a seat in this chair in kind of an awkward way with your legs facing the camera, people. Curly, I'd like you to have a seat in this chair in also kind of an awkward way with your legs facing me. So I'd like you to have a seat right here with your legs facing the back wall. And Chef, you have a seat here. We get the magic rope out. Focus, focus. You're getting sleepy. I want you to relax, breathe, and sleep. Nicely done, sir. Curly, watch, watch, and sleep. Nicely done. Mo, over here, watch, and sleep. Deeper, good. <laughs> and watch, sleep. Nicely done. Four people to deep hypnotic trance. I want you to relax, make yourself as light as the air. In a moment, we're gonna levitate you. May I have that inside arm, make a friend. Welcome to San Francisco, make a friend, yes. Just lean back, what do you put in your hair, dude? Okay, good. <laughs> Slowly lean back, yes. And I want you to lean back like so. Give me that inside arm. You can hold him, you don't have to cuddle him. That's nice, that's good, though. Okay, good, and sleep, and sleep. Men, feet flat on the ground, knees together. Knees together, feet flat on the ground. Listen to my voice. In a moment, I'm gonna make you levitate. So I want you to imagine you don't weigh a ton, the opposite. You're as light as air, you got it? Starting with Larry, you're as light as air. Lift your butt up, your butt, Larry. You lift your butt. Curly, you keep all your weight on him. Ladies and gentlemen, four volunteers. 
and only three chairs. Your next, Mo. Feet on the ground, lift your butt. Feet flat, lift your butt. Four volunteers, and only two chairs. I've never gone this far before. <laughs> lift, 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 lift. Four volunteers in one chair. Never in the history of magic has a magician pulled the last chair. You're sliding. You're sliding. Just come back up on him. You doing okay? Keep breathing. And sleep. Nice. And lift. Four volunteers Woo! and no chairs, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah! No chairs. That's the end. Good afternoon. Have a good night. Good evening. He's leaving. He's leaving. And now I tickle you. <laughs> Using nothing but four chairs and grabbing four people, you're able to fill up a giant area, grab the attention of everyone around. That moment when you said they're hypnotized and then the, and Cameron first instantly goes like that, I was like, uh, uh, that, that's That surprising. doesn't normally happen. No, it doesn't normally happen. What happens if they don't pretend to be hypnotized so at the moment? So I say sleep and uh, they don't sleep. Right. And in my microphone, I on, whisper. On mic, yeah. on my, well, it's a headset. You, you stage whisper, yeah. I stage whisper, I say, just pretend. Right. And then they laugh and then they go out and then there's another laugh because how they go out. Now there's a structure to everything. First of all, how do you set up the four chairs? So it's each one staggered. So if you're looking at it, it looks like a cube. And from the outside of the cube, it's, it's back a chair, though, seat, back a chair, seat. So you set up the chairs, is the, and I assume it doesn't matter the order as they sit down to begin with. It does a bit, because sometimes you have someone's a little heavier, okay. someone's a little bit taller. Okay. So you don't want to put a really big person on a really small person. Good point. So first point is you want to get four strong, healthy people. Right. You want to be approximately the same size and weight. Because if for some reason you have someone that's smaller, or someone's bigger, you don't put the biggest person on the small person, you stagger it. Okay. Okay. So now, but you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to go in order, so it was biggest, smaller, 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 because that means that the last person at the end and would get all the way. Would be on the yes. Okay, yes. got it. So some other important keys. You want to have have them have their feet flat on the ground okay. and knees together. If the knees are part, that's less stable. And if the feet are not flat on the ground, it's less stable. The other thing is I have their inside arm come out and and cuddle, hug, or hold the person now, in front I of them. That, that locks that, them in. Yeah. Well, and and you did it as kind of a hypnosis bit, like get intimate, and it made everybody kind of chuckle. But that also it helps the, to build the structure that keeps them all suspended on each other. It locks them together, makes them feel like a team. They're all on the same team. They're they're not trying to get away from the other person. They're literally holding the other person in place. Okay, good. So, and then you have them all arranged. They're all, pretty, and now it doesn't matter what direction their head is leaning. Well, they all go straight back slowly because you want them to hit their head, of the, their head on the head of the chair. Okay. And the other thing is you want them all to be tucked into the center because if they start to slide out, which we have, as you slid out, it became unstable. So as, as long as he's close to the center, it's easier for everyone. Now, do you always walk off stage at the very I, end? I walk straight off stage without looking over my shoulder and I get off stage and I quickly peek and I wait into that sweet spot where they're just about to fall. When it starts about to fall, I run out and put my arm out to grab their hand. If there's a lady in it, I always make sure I take her hand and lift her up so that she doesn't so fall. So it's not a case where, you know, oh, it's only appropriate to do this with guys. No, I make sure they're wearing, not wearing a dress okay. or skirt. Or sure. if they do, you point them towards the back wall. Sure. Depends on your venue, okay. I guess. Oh, I guess you have to think about that because if they're wearing skirts, you don't want to accidentally give and them And you want to take show. off their high heel shoes because that makes it less stable. And as far as Pack small, play big. You essentially you, pack nothing. All you do is direct people. To you go have get me chairs. Organic comedy that happens, and you get to, to be a fake hypnotist. That's amazing, man. Very cheers, well done. Man. Don't fall for the curse of knowledge. Just because you know it's not a real hypnosis trick doesn't mean that it's not going to be a blast for everybody participating, and it won't make a huge spectacle at the bar. Also, that was taught to us by our friend Robert Strong, who just released The King of All Mirrors. This thing is amazing. It creates impossible selfies. Make sure to check out the video on that. It's a card that appears inside a mirror that you cannot see at all, and even when the picture's taken, nobody else sees it. It's amazing. You're going to love it. But more importantly, what if we could all hang out? Out in some kind of magical land of scams where we could play card games and swap ideas like a, a new nation like a like we discovered a new world of scams some kind of scam nation and what if it was a discord server and what if there was a link to it right now down below jump down let's let's hang around Guys, this has been a blast. I know some of you have been here from the very, very beginning. Others of you are just joining us, which is why it's so important that we collect all the best of into one big, fat, chunky block. It's like a big Thanksgiving meal that we're all enjoying together. And I can't wait to continue to get back to new stuff, new superstars of magic teaching us wizard powers. But also, like seriously, you play Hearthstone, right? You, you wanna hit me up? Schwood, uh, do I think that's me. That's, no, that's, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, just bleep that out. It's, uh, ask me on the Discord. It's fine. Jump down, hang around, play a little Hearthstone. That's that's a real saying that I heard once. <laughs> Jump down, hang around.
around and play a little art stuff. Where did that come from?